Welcome to Geothermal University. I'm Kyle Smith. In this video, we'll learn how to troubleshoot an electronic commutated motor, or as commonly referred to as an ECM blower motor. Let's get started. There are three distinct operational and troubleshooting steps we'll discuss today. They are no blower operation, incorrect airflow, motor rocking back and forth. First, we'll discuss no blower operation. Low voltage initiates blower operation. Unlike a permanent split capacitor motor, or PSC as it's commonly called, an ECM motor requires 24 volts and high voltage to energize. First we'll test the low voltage off the transformer. Check for 24 volts between XFMR, the transformer, and the COM, common on ECM board. If we have a secondary low voltage power, we know the transformer is good. If good, Place a call for blower motor by moving the fan switch on the thermostat to the on position. In the on position, the blower should run in circulation mode for 50% airflow. We can confirm a call for blower operation by measuring 24 volts between G and C terminals on the low voltage terminal board. If we have 24 volts between G and C, we know power is being sent up and back down from the thermostat. If there is no voltage between G and C, the thermostat may not be sending power to G. The next step is to confirm we have high voltage. ECM motors are universal voltage and wired for either 120 or 240 volt operation. In this instance, we are troubleshooting a 240 volt system. Caution! The high voltage power for an ECM motor is wired direct and unbroken. For this reason, it is important that power be disconnected when working near high voltage connections. The ECM motor is supplied voltage from L1 and L2 through the 5 pin plug on the motor. Remember, L1 and L2 are hot. Live wires all the way to the motor unless the breaker is off. First we'll test voltage at L1 and L2. If there is no voltage at L1 and L2, check the breaker. If we have voltage at L1 and L2, we'll check for voltage at the motor. Since we have a high voltage at L1 and 2, we'll verify we have high voltage on the plug at the motor. Remove the 5 pin plug on the motor, depressing the retainer clips on either side. Remember the plug is hot if we have power to the unit. Measure voltage between the black and white wires on pins 5 and 4. You should measure 208, 230 plus or minus 10%. On ECM blower motors utilizing 208, 230 volts, there should not be a jumper between pins 1 and 2. Leave the plug unplugged from the motor for the next few steps. You'll also want to check voltage for 120 volts from the pins 4 and 5 to ground. This verifies we have a good ground. There are several components in the ECM circuit. If we have high voltage to the motor and low voltage to the ECM board and G and C terminals, we'll take a closer look at the motor. Disconnect the 16 pin harness from the motor by depressing the retainer clip on the side. Never pull on the wires. With the retainer clip down, pins are numbered 1 to 8 on the bottom row left to right and 9 to 16 on the top row left to right. Measure for voltage between pin 1, the common pin, and pin 15, the G circuit pin. With 24 volts applied to G and 15, the blower runs at 50% total airflow or continuous mode. If we have no voltage between 1 and 15, we need to check same terminals, 1 and 15, at the ECM board. If we have voltage between 1 and 15 on the plug on the ECM board, the harness may be defective. Look for dislodged wires or brakes. Here's a 16 pin configuration for the harness. Remember, number 1 is bottom left and number 15 is second from right on top row. If necessary, ohm each wire from end to end. Each of the 16 pins in the harness carries voltage or signal. Power is supplied through different pins to run the blower at select speeds. Here's a partial list of pin designations and their functions. Knowing where to apply 24 volts on the harness module is an important test and diagnostic test. By applying 24 volts on different pins, blower speed changes can be observed. In this example, we simply verify 24 volts to the motor via pin 15 or the G terminal. Geothermal University has a technical handout. On its website, you can print showing the pin designations. 
If we have low voltage power from ECM board through the harness to the motor on G circuit, pin 15, the electronics may be failed. You may wish to verify 24 volts between pin 1, common, and pin 12, R, incoming power. There are two components to an ECM motor. The module has all the electronics and software while the motor is the copper windings. Since there are capacitors on the module, it is important to disconnect power to the unit and wait five minutes before disconnecting the module from the motor. The motor is wound just like a three-phase motor. You'll want to measure red to blue, red to black, and black to blue. Ohm readings should be within 10% and less than 20 ohms differential. You'll also want to ohm each winding to ground. There should be no resistance or infinite to ground. If ohm readings are good and shaft spins motor is good. If the motor does not ohm out to these specifications, it must be replaced. If the module has 24 volts to the module and the motor tested good, the electronics have likely failed. Sometimes a module alone can be ordered. If the module is not available by itself, the module and the motor must be ordered and replaced. Remember, each module is programmed for CFM unique to the specific model. Odds are, an off-the-shelf module in inventory is not programmed correctly. The module must be programmed exact for each specific unit. Some manufacturers like Gentech a division of Regal Beloit Corporation, one of the largest manufacturers of electric motors, offer an ECM testing tool. Using this tester is a pretty simple. Attach the clips to a 24 volt source. Connect the 16 pin harness and apply a flip the switch. This is a simple go, no go test, just like we're performing without the tester. Another service mode in questions we hear is the blower airflow seems incorrect or louder blower motor operation. Since ECM ramps up to overcome static, it uses more current and is louder when the filter is dirty. An ECM motor can be very noisy when operating against high static. If the blower is noisy, make sure that any shipping brackets that came with the unit were removed and the filter has been recently replaced. For incorrect airflow, it is important to check the dip switch settings and our CFM flash rate. Look for a green light on the ECM board. The light on the ECM board flashes once for every 100 CFM. Count the flashes. Using our ECM pin designation function chart, we can also measure voltage on the pins at the board or on the harness and verify a pin is powered for the specific mode. For instance, if I am on second stage cooling Y slash Y2, I should have voltage between common and pin 14. Remember, an ECM control board sends the speed command. It is important to check the manufacturer's dip switch settings for proper configuration. Make sure switch is not midway on the board. If the speed commands on each pin are correctly energized and the blower has not changed speeds, the module has failed. If the motor does not shut off at the end of the cycle, check the delay times and wait for delays to come to a timeout. Make sure there is no continuous fan call on the G-terminal. The last operational characteristic we hear about very often is the motor rocking back and forth. It's a characteristic of the ECM to rock back and forth on startup. The rocking should last very briefly and the motor normally starts in the correct direction. This is normal for an ECM motor. If this is the only symptom identified, there is no need to replace the motor. If the motor continues to rock back and forth and never starts, it must be replaced. Troubleshooting an ECM motor is very simple. If it is necessary to replace a motor, you'll find it's no harder than replacing the standard PSC motor. A couple of other points. Electronically commutated motors are highly efficient and very reliable. An ECM motor is not a band-aid for a bad or restricted ductwork. A resisted duct system could lead to high current draw and premature motor failure. High voltage causes premature motor failures. Voltage must be within 187 and 252. If you find voltage at the high or low end of the range, more investigation will be needed. We understand because of the cost of an ECM blower motor that it can be hard for contractors to stock the motor and the module. Be sure to watch our next video on how to temporarily replace an ECM blower motor with a PSC blower motor 
to keep your customers happy and keep them heating and cooling throughout the seasons. Thanks for watching Geothermal University.